All right, so in this one, we are going to be creating our login view. Um, it's fairly straightforward when all we're doing is actually logging in the user, um, basically checking their password against their username and then logging in. Um, that's fairly straightforward to do, but it's once we get into like um, checking the number of times that they, they enter their password um, and then saying like, oh, there's an error, you might want to reset it or locking them out and doing all those things. That's where it can kind of get a little bit more complicated. So initially, we're going to do it on the easy way on doing just using their, path, their username and password, checking those things against each other and then actually authenticating them or allowing them to enter the service and then fully log in and it's two two separate things all right so first thing that i want to do is actually create the form for logging in and what we're going to do here is go to accounts new file save this file as forms.py within accounts of course and then this is where we'll be creating our first form for logging in. And all it's fairly straightforward. We just import forms from Django. So from Django import forms. And then we're gonna create our class of login form. And it's gonna be forms.form. So that's what it's that's the class that it's inheriting from. And it takes a username equals to forms.charfield. And we can leave it blank because it is required. So we definitely want to have that. And then we want to have our password field. So password equals forms.char field. And then we do widget equals to forms.password input. So this widget right here is what's going to allow us to have a password being like when you type in and it, it, it escapes the actual password. So I can show you what that's going to look like with the password and, or well, I don't even need to show you what it looks like without this because the username will show you what it looks like without it. All right, so that's all we need for our login form. So now we want to jump back into our views and we want to create a view for our login view. So we'll go def login view and it takes in a request. And first off, we're gonna use our form. So we have to import our form because we wanna use it. So we'll do from dot forms, import login form, right? So that's the login form that we're gonna use. So we set that here. And that form is gonna take request dot post or none. So what this means is on the login form, it's either gonna take in the request data if it's post data, or it's not gonna take in anything and it's just gonna render. Um, so it's basically saying if there's post data, take it in. If there's not, don't do anything. Because if all we did was put post here, it would um, run an error saying like, oh, the form is not filled out. And then if all we put was none, then it would, then it would never accept the data. It would never actually get the data in, which we could actually practice that out once we get this all figured out and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. All right, so now we have this form here and what we want to do is return render. It's going to take in the request and then what we'll, we want to use our template. So I'm just going to use a basic form.html here, which we still have to create. And then our context, uh, I'll just type out context and then put the context up here. And our context is going to be a dictionary that's going to include form and form, All right? So form, all these forms are arbitrary names. You could call it whatever you want, but calling it form, well, it makes it a little bit easier to work with, especially the context variable. So what the variable is in the actual template makes it also nice and easy for us if we call it the same as what we set in our login view. Okay, so now we've got this, let's actually add in our form in our templates. So in templates, I'm just gonna make it inside of the main templates folder. I'm gonna save this and we're gonna save it as form.html. There's a reason I'm calling it form.html because then it's a general form and we can use it all the time. So if I go to extends base.html, this is of course extending that base dot html design and everything and then we do block content all 
in block. And I'm just going to put form dot as p here. So underscore as p means as paragraph. So it's going to be formatted as HTML paragraph. I saved it. And now that we have that, we have our view, we have our template, we have our form, we have all that stuff set up. What's left? Hopefully, hopefully you know this answer by now, but if you don't, it's okay. What's left is we have to add it, a URL for it. So I'm going to follow the same naming convention that I did for logout. Just copy this paste it right underneath and call it login. And now it's a login view. And we will call this auth login. Great, so now that we have this, we can go back into our nav bar. And what we had here is if the user is authenticated, then show this stuff. Well, if they're not authenticated, we could do else. We wanna show the login, right? We wanna show a place for them to actually log in. URL off login and login. I'm going to take a moment and actually change some things here. Notice that I have single quotes here and double quotes here, where up here we have double quotes and double quotes and then single quotes. I'm actually going to reverse those. It seems very minor, but it's really good to follow the same pattern. Um, I do make mistakes on that all the time myself, but uh, for the purposes of, of just driving other developers insane if they ever look at your code, it's nice to follow a unique uniform pattern throughout all of your code. Um, that being said, I mess up all the time, so it's not, it's not something that you have to be perfect about, but when you can be, you might as well be. All right, so save that. Let's check this out now. Let's go back into our app. We're going to now see our login view. So if I click on this now, if we notice, I'm already logged out. So if I click on this login, uh-oh, it did not return a uh, response object. So let's actually see what's going on in our views. We return the re render request login view. Let's see if we've got the right name for our URL. We do. All right, let's look at our error a little bit closer. It's saying it did not return a response object. Not exactly sure what happened. I just did a little refresh and it popped up. Um, so all the code was correct. I think it just needed to refresh the server. That's what happens sometimes. Um, okay, so now the form actually popped through. Cool, so we actually see a form. So if I type out something, uh, it's going to show, see, this is what a char field shows. It shows characters, right, all kinds of characters. And then if I type out a password field, it hides the characters, right? And that's useful for when we actually have passwords, of course, right? That should make sense. If you have a password, you should hide it. Um, okay, so the form itself, I don't like where it's situated right now. So I'm going to do div class equals column small six and then column small offset three just to throw it right in the middle and if i refresh now it's actually in the middle that looks a little bit better and perhaps i would want to actually add a little bit of a margin on top so uh, i'll do margin top being let's say 50 pixels just so it's not right up on here all right so that brings it down well, there's a couple things we still need to do. We need a button to actually send this form. And actually, we need to make it a form. So in HTML, there's ways to write out a form. So forms have their own tags too. So we do form and form. So notice that Django itself, this is not actually rendering the HTML of the form. Now, there are third-party packages that can do that, but it's better to for us with this form specifically because then we can write out what this form should do. So first off, the method is going to be post. Remember, in our view, we wrote request.post. So this is the method that we're putting for our request. So there's different types of request methods. You can Google them, but there's post and get. Those are the popular ones. There's a few others, too. But post means we're going to be sending the data. Just like if you send mail, you post it, right? You send it through the post office of some kind. Um, so post it, you, we are sending data here, where get means we're getting data, right? So we're trying to grab data. Um, method is post. 
and then we're going to say action, like where we're sending it, we can leave it empty because we're sending it to the same view that it's on, right? So we can leave action empty. If we were sending it to a different URL, then that's where we'd put it. So if it was like accounts login URL here, we could do that. Right, we could write that whole URL out, or we could do the shortcut, which would be to write the actual URL name just like that, assuming, of course, we had a URL set up. Now, you might be like, oh, well, can't we just do our URL here? Well, I'm gonna say no, because this form, this form.html can be used in other areas. So let's just leave it the action as that. And then there's one other thing that we need to add, which is a CSRF token. So this stands for cross site request forgery, meaning other websites can't just send uh, the form going through. They can't just send post data and mess everything up. Uh, and actually it makes it a lot harder to do that. So I'll show you what it's like with the token and then I'll show you what happens if you don't have the token or you spell it incorrectly. And the last thing we need to put in is an input for our submit button. So input type equals submit value so like what we want the button to say i'm going to say um, log in because that makes sense and then class we're going to add the btn and btn def default for our class and then it is a self-contained tag so we just put a slash at the end and that's all we've got now if we refresh in here we now have our login button and if you notice it already has some autocomplete stuff for me and that's because I saved my passwords and I save them on, especially on this local one, I've saved the password so many times that it, Chrome is actually saying log in. But if I go into a private browsing window, which all I did was command shift in, I believe that works in Firefox and Safari. If I click log in now, it's now empty, right? It does, it's still, I mean, Chrome is still gonna autocomplete it for me, but it's not gonna do it right off the bat. All right, so now that we have this, I'm gonna hit login. Well, nothing happens. And that's because our view, we haven't actually set up anything to happen, right? So we collect the data here or none. So what we wanna do now is go if form.isValid print data, and we're gonna get the username and then we're gonna do print form dot cleaned data and we're gonna get the password. All right, so this is gonna get our username and password and that's gonna allow us to see what those are. And I'll explain the clean data in just a moment. All right, so I hit login and I look in my terminal, I see that I printed out the username and password twice. Great, that's perfect, that's what I wanna see. Um, so now that I have this, uh, I guess I'll make note of what clean data is. Now there's validation that goes through with these forms right here, right? So there's a, a way to actually validate the form and we're going to do some more validation stuff later. Uh, but for now, uh, just know that basically if you try to enter, um, like something that doesn't is not valid code it's gonna mess up so let's say for instance i wanted to write something here and then type out some other gibberish uh it's it's it, well it's not running an error right now because we haven't actually set any errors to be had but essentially that should be an error right because that's not actually a user or it's gonna eventually say this is not a valid user and then if i also put uh, incorrect password if I log in it will also say this is not uh, a valid password either those types of things happen when we run clean data right so that's how that's gonna happen there's another way to actually grab this information which is the way that nobody in Django suggests but I do want you to know about it is print request dot post and username Right, so this is actually overriding this. It's overriding the valid. This print request.post can work up here, um, but is valid means that it will be sent as post. So we can see that this will actually print the username twice. 
Um, so let's try that again. Hit log in. And now we see that it's coming through twice. Uh, the big, huge, huge disadvantage here is that it's not validating the form at all, meaning it's not checking to see if this is a real username or it's a, a registered user or anything like that. And then it's also not checking to see if this is a clean password or it's a password that actually works. Um, and it's not like some type of uh, spam code that's going to break everything. Um, so we'll get into that more later. But for now, let's set this equal to username. Username equals to the clean data of username. Password equals to the form clean data of password. Okay, so now that we have these things, um, we just need to verify or check the user's password. And to do that, we have a way of actually authenticating the password from the user. So to, to make sure that their password is real, we can actually go through and check the password based off of the user itself. But the first thing I'm going to do is actually authenticate the user, at least try to authenticate the user. And then once I can auth authenticate the user, I will log them in. Um, all right, so to do that, we're going to go authenticate, or sorry, user equals to authenticate, and username equals to username, and password equals to password. This might look confusing at first, but it's really not. Um, so the variable name, we're setting variables here, and then these are parameter names. Um, so these parameter names can't change, but the variable name can. And that's why um, Sublime Text actually changes the color for them because they are treated differently, even though they say the same thing. So this is a variable. This is a parameter. OK, so now the user, this is authentic authenticating the user. So assuming if that actually worked, then we would log in request and user. So this actually logs in the user. Um, so this authenticates to make sure that this user is real, and then this logs in the user. Um, it authenticates, it checks their password and username, and then it logs in the user. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to just reload this page completely. J Mitchell 3, 1, 2, 3, log in. And notice that this changed up here. I'm actually logged in. That successfully logged me in. Now let's log out and log in again. If I did a different password, it doesn't show me anything. And that's because we didn't set up any validation errors with our form, which is something we'll have to do in the next one.